Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And of course, we have a fun little brand new deck for you from the new set of Ikoria. But before we get into it, we're going to remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us, and we love you very much for it, and the link will be down below. And today, we are dealing with the deck Surprise! Hey! It's a Esper Flash deck, and it's... That's it. That's it's, all you need to know. It's worth doing. It's mm. Play things on your turn because I can't. Yep, exactly. And it should be fun, and it's less, and it can be counter, and I draw cards, and you know, a bunch of you know synergistic stuff to do. Take blue, and let's play blue. Yeah. Because that's all it does. With a little, with cute little colors on the side for it. And of course, the first creature that we have is Spectral Sailor. It's a one drop, one one, flash dude flying. that You can pay four, three and a blue to draw a card. That's good. He, he real good one drop, really, because yeah. you can play him early and then just late game, you're like, cool, draw cards. That's it. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Next up is the Cunning Nightbonder. She is two, a hybrid blue or black, and she's a 2 2 flash. Spells with flash you cast cost one less to cast and can't be countered. Yes. That's the key phrase on her that makes her ridiculous. Yeah. Because you're like, into turn, I'm going to flash this chick into play, and now you can't counter any of my stuff. Yeah. 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 Just don't mess with her. It's super awesome, super. Super badass, pretty much. Now to help with that, of course, is Brazen Borrower to help you tempo out. It's one and two blue. It's a three-one flash flying, and it can't. It can only block creatures with flying, but it also has a venture petty theft. It's one and a blue instant uh, return target non-land permanent to the owner's hand, uh, control to the owner's hand. So you do this, and then you can pay two blue to bring it anytime you want. Hopefully. Next up is the Murderous Rider. He is a 1 and 2 black for a 2-3 with lifelink, and when he dies, you put him on the bottom of the library. He does not have flash, but, but he's still really strong. Because of his adventure. Yeah, an adventure is Swift End. He's 1 and 2 black for that as well, and it's instant. Uh, destroy target creature or planeswalker, you lose 2 life. Yep. So it is the early kill that you need just to stop whatever. Whether it's a big creature, whether it's a planeswalker, like Teferi, you just need to kill him. Yeah. Get out of my game, don't do what you're doing. Just Get, get out of here, uh, Nissa, for sure. The next one is Sea Dasher Octopus. It's one and two blue. It's a two, two flash. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. But it also has a mutate. And mutate is one and a blue and you cast a spell on a non-human creature. And then you get to put it on top or bottom. And then basically it gets the abilities, whatever, top to bottom. So all but one creature, the, the two Demir costing one is a human, but to be able to swing in, flash this in, and then be able to, you know, draw a card. Yeah, flashing this onto like a murder rider, kind of silly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Next up is the Slither Wisp. It is a blue and two black for a 3-2 elemental nightmare with flash. Whenever you cast another spell that has flash, you're, you may draw a card, or you draw a card and each opponent loses one life. Wow. Yep. That dude is kind of silly because you're like hey let's play flash dudes and that turns all your one drop flash dudes into just cantrips yeah pretty much and that's what why this dude's in the deck like this is why the deck is made to be honest because you just flash them in and then just hopefully everything costs less and they you do a lot of damage yeah. and draw cards like that's the perfect thing you want to do with blue the next one is ferocious great shark it's three and two blue five four flash and when it enters the battlefield counter target artifact or creature spell I wish it did enchantment or all counters, of course, as well. But when you're able to play this for four mana because the human, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, that is kind of silly. Just being like, hey, you can't counter this and I get to counter your stuff. Yeah, and you, I have a 5-4 on board. <laughs> yeah, because I get to kill you now. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Next up, Omen of the Sea. It is a blue and one for a flash enchantment. And whenever it enters the battlefield, scry two, then draw a card. And you can pay a blue and two and sacrifice it to scry two. So it just helps you get there. Like you just keep yeah. drawing what you want to draw and it helps set your deck up. Yep. And the, the fact that human says permanent. So this costs one blue when you play it and it can be countered if they want to try to counter. But that's pretty good. You want to play this in every blue deck. It's just an extremely strong card. Now a card that I completely forgot about is Law Mage's Binding. It's one white and a blue enchantment or a flash an enchant creature. An enchant creature can't attack or block or activate its abilities can be activated. So that's super key. Especially if it costs one less. Yeah, super awesome. Two mana pacifism with extra? Yeah. Sweet. Next up, Mortify. It is one in white and a black, and it's instant destroy target creature or enchantment. So, I mean, it's technically got flash, but it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't cost less. But it just kills cards. what you need, an enchantment or a creature. And right now, with enchantments being so prevalent, it's really, really good. Yeah, definitely. 
And speaking of enchantment, I really want to play this deck or this card all the time is Ashok's Erasure. It's two and two blue enchantment. It has flash, and when it enters the battlefield, exile target spell. Your opponent can't cast spells with the same name as that exiled card. And then when Ashok uh, Erasure leaves the battlefield, return that card to the hand, and it's not casted at that moment. That's super key to this, because like uh, I think it was the, the spirit blue white flying spirit exiles the thing, and once they kill it, they play it. This one it goes back to their hand, so they have to wait another turn. And also, when you turn two human, this costs three, so you can get their big three drop, and it, temp it throws off their tempo yeah. completely. Yeah, that would throw off tempo pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that it's just like, just don't cast that ever again. It feels amazing. Next up is Time Wipe for when things get real out of hand. Mm -hmm. It is a two and a white, white, and a blue, so five mana total. Return a creature you control to its owner's hand, then destroy all creatures. So protect your one dude that you want to keep, so like... You, you return your great fish, your great shark, and then you kill the void. Yep. And you're like, cool, I have a counter spell next turn. Great. Enjoy that. Yeah, I just feel like I know like people put board wipes on creature deck. Yes, because sometimes your dudes will be dead and they're going to have a plethora of them. Yeah. And you can just go with it. Now, of course, the, that brings the deck to the whole, and then this just has all the lands. And I'm, instead of temples, I've been using Fable Passage. It's extremely good. I love it. And I think it works out really well. And then the next one, of course, is uh, Gaulish Shrine, the black-white shock land. The Hollowed Fountain, which is a blue-white shock land. And then we have uh, basically our basics, the island, swamp, and plains. And then we have Watery Grave, which is the blue-black uh, shock land. And that rounds it out, pretty much. It's uh, pretty solid. And sadly, there's no Triome for Esper, which makes me really sad. Otherwise, I would use it for sure. It's okay though. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. You still get Fable Passage and all the other stuff, so it's really not that bad. Yeah. With that, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I think the deck is super solid. I've been playing it on Arena already just to test it out and see what needs changes that needs to be made and such. But it's fun. And once you get that the first, if the turn two human is key, and then throw, then you can boost your tempo over their tempo as soon as possible, pretty much. And then you can start winning and controlling the board from there. But with that, uh, hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geektopia Island. And you have a good day. Goodbye. Later. Also, guys, we just remind y'all to hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel. And if you want to keep up to date on all the future content, make sure you click that bell. It will give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year. And especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. We love you.